and today we are going to make and investigate straw rockets. Today we'll be learning how to construct straw rockets. And on top of learning a little bit about force, a little bit about aerodynamics, we'll also be learning a lot about the scientific and engineering design and investigation process. Today, by the end of our session, you'll be able to identify variables that impact the flight of a straw rocket, construct a straw rocket, and analyze data to create modifications using the engineering and design process. Now the engineering and design process can sound like a really fancy term for a really difficult process that you might have to go through. But the reality is we use the engineering and design process all the time. It's the method that we use to problem solve things. We identify what our problem is, we brainstorm solutions, we come up with designs to implement our solutions, and then we build those designs. And then constantly, as human beings, we're testing, evaluating, and making changes to those designs to solve our problems in better, more efficient ways. So today, the first four parts of this design process, we're going to do together. We're going to identify the problem, we're going to brainstorm a solution, select and build a design and a prototype. It's going to be your job, with a little bit of guidance, to test, evaluate, and optimize your design for your straw rocket once we get there. To build your straw rocket, you're going to need a couple different things. Now, some of these are optional. You're definitely going to need some computer paper. Any color will do. If you want some different types of paper, because that's a variable that might impact your straw rocket's flight, you can certainly have different options available to you. You're going to need a straw. I don't have any plastic straws or paper straws here, but I did have one of my reusable straws that I chose to use. If you have a reusable straw, plastic straws, and paper straws, you might want to try different ones. You'll need some clear tape, a pencil, scissors, and a writing utensil. Now, before we get started making our straw rocket, let's talk about the forces that are going to act on any rocket. First, there's going to be thrust. Now, this rocket is a straw rocket. That thrust is going to be provided as we exhale into our straw. And that's going to move our rocket forward. Just like everything here on Earth, there's also going to be weight to our rocket. Now, certainly not a lot of weight since it's a paper rocket, but that weight is going to be acted upon by gravity, and that's going to be pulling our rocket perpendicularly or at a 90 degree angle down towards the ground. There will also be lift, an aerodynamic force, pushing our rocket upward due to the fins, and there will also be drag from friction. There's actually a couple places that our rocket could experience friction today. That's going to be from the fins, as well as the air resistance, and also there's going to be friction between our rocket and the straw. Okay, so to make our straw rockets, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need scissors, you're going to need a straw. This could be a plastic straw, it could be a paper straw. I have a like a stainless steel reusable straw here. Um, you may even want a couple different types of straws if you have it. You'll need a sharpened pencil, you'll need some clear tape, and you'll need some paper. Now I have two different types of paper here. This is regular computer paper, and then I also have like a cardstock. You can have as many different types of paper as you would like, but we're all going to start with computer paper if you have it. So we're not going to do any exact measuring because I want everybody to be able to make these whether you have a ruler or not. What's more important is that your rockets are similar. They don't have to be exactly the same to mine, um, but if you make multiple rockets you want to make sure they're as similar as possible. So to do that we're going to start with our piece of computer paper and we are going to fold it in half hamburger style. Okay, that means I fold the top to the bottom. Now, we don't need this. It, would, it could also be like a book, right? So we don't need the whole amount. So I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors, and I'm going to cut down the middle as best and as straight as I can.
And then I'm going to turn it so that it's sideways. Now here's where normally we would maybe measure, um, but here you can kind of use your judgment. If you're a big kid, you might use three fingers from the edge. If you're a little kid, you might use four fingers from the edge. I'm going to use three. If you have really, really big fingers, you might use two. So I'm just going to take my pointer finger to the edge of the paper and mark lightly kind of where my third finger ends. Okay, then I'm going to flip the paper. I'm going to use that same edge, so my mark is up here now. And I'm going to mark where my third finger ends. Now you could take a ruler or a straight edge and you could connect these and draw a line as best you could and then cut it. Um, I'm actually going to fold it. So I'm going to try and fold it here so that my two marks line up and keep my paper pretty straight. All right, so now I should have a nice little rectangle of paper and we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut that off. And this is what is going to become the fuselage for the body of our straw rocket. And now we need to actually make the body or the fuselage of our rocket and we need eventually we'll need to make fins um, but we'll also make our nose cone. So I'm going to set this up on my pencil and I'm going to take the edge of the paper and carefully just roll it along so that I get about the width of my pencil. Now it takes a little bit of skill. You might have to do it a couple times. It shouldn't be too tight. You should be able to wiggle the pencil around. You're going to use your tape and I'm going to put, this is kind of important, I'm going to put a piece of tape that goes almost all the way to the bottom. And now I'm not going to put a piece of tape all the way at the top. Okay, I'm going to go about maybe an inch or about a thumb length, like the top of my thumb length down from the top. I'm going to put my other piece of tape. Okay, and there's going to be, that's going to be the body of our rocket. Now, the other part of our rocket we need to make is our nose. This is the part that kind of cuts through the air. It makes it very aerodynamic. Um, and we're going to do that very unscientifically um, by just twisting. You'll see I have a sharpened pencil here, and I'm just going to kind of move this up so it's just above the pencil tip. And we are going to twist the paper. into a point. All right, so you can see I kind of have a point there on the end, and I'm going to use another piece of tape to try and smooth out that nose cone a little bit. So I have my pencil tip is in here. I'm just going to take my piece of tape, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, as best I can, and go around my nose cone. Okay, it's really important that you close off the top of this um, because that is what is going to give our straw rocket some thrust today. If this isn't closed off, you won't get as much thrust. So if you need to add another tiny piece of tape at the top, you can absolutely do that just to make sure that your nose is closed off. Okay, so there is our fuselage and our nose cone. And we double want to double check before we move on that this is going to fit onto our straw. We are missing one very important piece of our rocket, and that is our fins. So our fins, you are going to get to make free form today. You can make them whatever shape you would like. I generally find that I have the most luck when I make them triangular. But instead of making, let's say, four triangular fins, I'm gonna make two sets of two. And I'm gonna do this by drawing a rectangle. And notice my rectangle is just about the width of my rocket. And then drawing my triangles. Now, if you're really fancy and you want to make sure they're absolutely symmetrical, you could 
Also fold your paper in half. So I'm going to use a separate piece of paper here. And I could draw half of my rectangle and then my triangle. And you can cut this out. So either way you do it, you can cut it out like this. that or if you do it this way if you did it on the crease it's going to cut a nice symmetrical shape for me which is going to ensure that we have a little better reliability okay that means it's going to be symmetrical hopefully it's going to fly a little straighter because of that just depends on how technical you want to be so now if I unfold that you'll see I have nice symmetrical rocket fins. Now once you make one, you will want to make the other by tracing the rocket fin that you just made. So I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to trace the outline here. Um, that's also going to help my rocket fly Oop. a little bit more straight. Okay, if you put different size fins on and things, I mean you can definitely experiment with it. But if you put different size fins on, um, you may get different results from your different rockets. So I'm just going to cut that out. And the trickiest part is cutting this little guy out. But I think we got it. All right. Perfect. Oop, I missed the spot. Almost perfect. Now perfect. All right, so now I'm going to need two additional little pieces of tape. These do not have to be big at all. Maybe a little bigger than that. Okay. And we are going to tape these to our fuselage. All right, so I'm going to try and go directly across from each other and I'm going to just tape my fins on and then I'm going to go directly to the other side like this and I'm going to tape my fins on. Sometimes it's easier if you put the tape on the fins and then you line the fins up and tape them on. And then you can kind of play with your fins as much as you want. You can try and bend them out a little bit. I'm going to bend mine. Think like a Star Wars X-Wing fighter, right? Uh, but all of this will impact how your rocket flies. So the more symmetrical this is, the straighter your rocket will fly. So there's my fins. Got my straw here. I want to make sure everything's nice and attached. And then... We're ready to test it out. So now that you have your rocket, it's time to do a little bit of investigating. We said that part of the engineering and design process is to identify a problem or to try and answer a question. So the question we're going to try and answer is, how does force impact distance? Now in this example, we have an independent variable. That's the variable that we change on purpose, that's going to be the force. And I can change the amount of force in my straw rocket by how quickly or how much air I exhale into the straw. So I'm going to change that on purpose. Now there's no great way to measure that, so I have this listed as low force or high force. The dependent variable, the, the thing that I think depends on how much air and how quickly I exhale into the straw, is going to be the distance. So my controls are everything else. I want to make this as accurate as possible. So I'm going to use the same rocket. I'm going to um, try and use the same amount of force to the best of my ability. And I'm also going to do multiple trials. We're going to do two trials for each one and then calculate the average. That's going to help me get more reliable and accurate results. All right, we've made one straw rocket and now it is time to investigate. Okay. we have decided that we are going to investigate the question, how does force 
impact distance. Now there are a couple things we need to keep in mind here. So my force today is going to be providing this rocket, our straw rocket, with thrust. Okay, and the way that I add thrust and force is by blowing into the straw here. So by exhaling faster or by exhaling more air in a certain amount of time, I'm providing more force. Now there's no extra scientific way for us to measure the force that I'm providing. So for our investigation, I'm just going to do low force and high force, right? So we're going to try low force first and then high force. Now there are a couple things we need to keep in mind so that we can have a good investigation. And those are called our control variables. Now one way we're controlling our variables is by using the same rocket. I'm going to use the same straw rocket I built over and over again, so I'm not changing things like weight, fins, fin placement, or anything like that. The second thing that we can control is the angle of our rocket. Now most rockets launch this way. For our investigation today, we're going to launch, we're going to launch this way. And for this set of investigations, I'm going to make sure that I keep my rocket nice and flat, as parallel to the ground as possible, zero degree angle. Now this is something we could change later, or you might choose to investigate later with your straw rockets. Okay? So in order to do our investigation, we need to be able to measure distance. Now, I know many of you won't have uh, meter sticks or meter tapes or measuring tapes at home, so I'm actually just going to use a sidewalk in my backyard. All the sidewalk blocks are about the same length, and I'll just show you where they are. This is one, two, three, four, five, and it does go all the way up to six. Okay, so we've got six blocks, and we can divide them into quarters and halves as we need to. So I'm going to start here on my starting line. This is trial number one for low force. All right, here we go. You've got to count me down. Three, two. One. All right, so let's see how far we went. One, two, three. I'm going to go by the back of my rocket each time, and that's just about in the half. So trial one for low force is three and a half sidewalk blocks. Now, we want to make sure we get accurate data, so we're going to do a second trial. All right, I'm going to set up again. Now count me down. Three, two. One. All right, here we go. One, two. I'm measuring from the back again. Just, it's just the nose is just about touching three. So I'd say that's one, two, right at like 2.8. We could say 2.75. We're really close to three. So that tells me that I did a pretty good job with my force. It was pretty accurate both times. I was close to three sidewalk blocks. All right, now we're going to move on to our high force investigation. We're going to do two trials for this one too. So I'm going to stand on my starting line. This time I'm going to put out more air, about the same amount of time. Okay, I'm going to keep my zero degree angle. I'm using the same rocket. Here we go. Count me down. Three, two, one. Oh, all right. One, two, three, four, and if I measure from the back, we're at about four and a half sidewalk blocks for high force. So we had three and a half the first time, between three and three and a half. With higher force, we got the four and a half. We got one more try. Here we go. Count me down. Three, two, one. All right, so we got... One, two, three, and we're basically on four. Okay, so again, I was pretty consistent with my force. We were right around four, four and a half each time. Now, it's okay that these weren't perfect because we're also going to take the average. So let's take a look at our data table and we'll tally them up. How does force impact distance? All right, so now that we've done our experiment, it's time to take a look at our data. So we had a little bit of data. We said that for trial one, it went 3.5, and we were measuring in sidewalk blocks. So I don't have a, a particular unit for that, um, but I'll go ahead and put side 
walk blocks. And then in our second trial, it went 2.8 sidewalk blocks. Now, if we average those two together, I'm going to do 3.5 plus 2.8, and then I'm going to divide that whole number by 2, because there were two trials. That gives me an average of 3.15 sidewalk blocks. When I switched to a higher amount of force, I was exhaling with more force into the straw for our rocket, providing more thrust forward. In trial one, our rocket went four and a half sidewalk blocks, and in trial two, it went four sidewalk blocks. Now, if I add 4.5 plus four, that gives me 8.5 divided by two for our two trials, that gives me an average of 4.25 sidewalk blocks. So looking at our experiment and knowing that I didn't control for everything perfectly, I do see a trend. And that trend is that the higher the force, the more I increase my force, also the higher the distance. So as force increases, the distance my straw rocket can travel increases. So going back to our problem, making a straw rocket that goes the farthest, that means I'm going to have to provide an optimal amount of force. The more force I use, the farther my straw rocket will go. We came up with a solution, came up with a design for our rocket, we selected a design, we built the prototype, and we have tested and evaluated. Now we have an opportunity to optimize the design. Science and engineering is really all about investigating. So in order to optimize our design, we have to ask other questions. The question that we asked was about distance. How can I make my rocket go farther? You could ask other questions about your rocket. You could look at other parts of your rocket. What are you going to choose to explore? Now to do this, we have to be able to set up good investigative questions. Investigative questions can take a lot of different forms, but kind of the easiest one is something that looks like this. How does blank impact blank? For our previous question we asked, how does the force impact the distance? Okay, and then you need to think through, how are you going to be able to investigate this? Well, how will you be able to change the independent variable? Our independent variable before was force. I changed that by the amount of air I was exhaling into the rocket. How can you control for other variables? We've talked about that a couple times. What force on the rocket does the variable impact? So is it impacting the thrust, the lift, the drag, the weight? And then what is your hypothesis? What do you think is going to happen based on the question that you're asking? So for example, this time, what if we look at mass? We looked at force last time. We know force and mass are related. How does mass impact distance? So option one would be that we could use a heavier paper, maybe like a cardstock, because we know that's going to weigh more. Or option two, for our rocket, we could maybe add some paper clips, maybe two paper clips and then four paper clips. So we're gonna keep using the same rocket that's gonna help us keep our control. And we're going to try and keep the same angle with the same amount of force. So blowing with the same amount of force exhaling into the straw. So what force does this impact? The mass will impact the weight, which actually impacts the force of gravity acting on our rocket, which is gonna pull it towards the ground. And then I would come up with my hypothesis. If I add more mass to the rocket, then I think this will happen because, and you would give an answer. So what are you going to explore? What are you going to find? Take a look at your rocket. What are some of the variables that you could change that you think impact the flight of your rocket? Happy investigating. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me for science today. I hope you had a great time. I hope you learned something and we'll see you soon. Always keep investigating.